hitch-based systems, particularly in doubled rope, you get a bit of rope twist, and there's a way to combat that. One is to keep your hitch tied consistently. And by that, I mean I've got equal tension on both legs of the hitch, running all the way to the top of the hitch. <clears throat> Oftentimes, I will tie my hitch, and then I'll start from the bottom, and I'll simply just push the rope, I'll massage the hitch upward, making sure that there's even tension on both legs. And that's going to help with any rope twist that might occur. Because if one leg is under higher tension than the other, it's going to manipulate the rope that way. Rope twist can happen, for example, if your rope is wrapped around a branch or something on the ground. Obviously, we've got coils there happening, just like on a Porter Wrap or GRCS. That's going to cause rope twist. Another thing that causes rope twist is when your rope is rubbing over the surface of a branch. So if I'm redirected over this way and the rope is running across that branch, we could generate rope twist. A very large factor in rope twist that gets overlooked is the climber themselves. We can influence that rope twist for better or worse. If we look at the pattern of the rope here, it's pretty straight. There's, this is a pretty new rope. I don't have any twist in this, in this rope yet. Now, if I just put a little tension in here and I, and I descend a bit, I'm descending straight down and the rope pattern is not changing. It's not spinning. Now, I'm going to twist my wrist one way as I descend. And now you can see that rope pattern moving. So straight down, now I'm going to twist, push on my thumb. You can see the rope twisting like a left hand uh, corkscrew. And now if I turn to the right and push with my fingers, the rope is twisting back the other way. Okay, so that is the climber inputting that twist in the rope. So it's important to have a neutrally running hitch. That's less apt to put twist in the rope and also just watch your positioning. So oftentimes when we're stretching way out, we might have a particular way that we like to push our arm back and we'll put twist in that rope. To take rope twist out of the rope, I generally look between myself and the anchor point. So when I look up toward that anchor point, I wanna see no twist in that rope. If I have some twist in the tail, that's usually okay. I can take care of that later. But the most important point is to have a nice, clean, straight rope all the way to your anchor point and back. You'll notice I have a grommet here on the spine of my carabiner, and that helps keep that hitch from falling down the spine. Okay, that's a good thing to put in place. I really, I see a lot of photos. Maybe this is extreme, but I do see a lot of photos like this when somebody's got their hitch way down, way down on their spine, spine there. So just watch out for that. But speaking of carabiner selection, we have <clears throat> an Ultra O, this is a Duralock, and we have our Perfecto. I like the Perfecto, it, it's a little bit shorter, pulls that eye splice a little further away from the hitch. But the ovals are excellent for use in this system. We keep everything neat and organized. We're playing to the strengths of that oval. Okay, if you were only to have, for example, one oval and one modified D-shaped carabiner, for example, like this shadow, okay? This is less than ideal. We're starting to load this carabiner away from the spine, further toward the nose, all right? What makes this even worse is when someone flips that over because they wanna be able to easily clip in and out of a swivel on their bridge, for example, and you get this going on. Now this is cramming too much stuff into the, the basket of that carabiner, right? And you can even influence the gate right there you can see it's already it's already pushed the gate part way so avoid doing that if you only have one oval carabiner then use it on the bottom and don't forget your grommet but if i only did have the one oval a connector like the shadow from point a to point b right this connector is designed to keep the load close to the spine all right 
that would be a, a, an okay place to use that. I still prefer an oval there, just personal preference. But if you do only have one oval carabiner, make sure you're putting it on the bottom. Also make sure you're connecting the hitch eyes to the bottom hole of the hitch climber. You get the most benefit out of that. So let's get climbing, okay?